humble, honest, professional. He's a, he's a great guy. I've dealt with a lot of people in my time, a lot. In my books, he's number one. He doesn't hesitate to make sure that we are doing things in his view of safe, professional, his view of right versus wrong, and we need those people. Ron was raised on a farm just outside of Elmira. He was raised in a Mennonite home. He had a strict upbringing, and yes, they expected him to work and work hard. I met Ron very early. I broke the cardinal rule because he was dating my best friend. <laughs> and when she decided that was over, I just picked up the pieces because we had become really good friends. And dated for six years, and then got married. Probably what really drew me to him is he drove hot cars. <laughs> so he liked to do a lot of racing where he wasn't supposed to be racing. He lived on the edge. Well, as a student, he pumped gas, like all three of our children did. Um, for and the same guy. For the same guy, yeah. <laughs> That's true. When he was in grade 11, he was driving a pickup truck delivering loads to the farmers. And as soon as he graduated, he was employed at Wallenstein Feed. And he started there with a straight job truck, I believe, and then eventually into a transport. He absolutely loved every minute. He just loved trucking. He would have worked for Wallenstein until 1975. And that's when he was approached by Brian Bauman, Beeline Express. Um, he needed somebody to help run the company, so he decided to go work for him. He did everything, and he worked 16, 18 hours. So in 1990, they transitioned from Beeline Express to Bridgeland Terminals. The name Bridgeland Terminals, from what Ron has said, comes from a road around Yorkdale Mall. He came home one night for supper and he said, Brian and Bill want to sell the company. It's a big company that's buying it. They will relocate to a big city and that doesn't protect my employees. I can't let that happen. And I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to stay there. And I said, well, then you got to figure out how you can afford to stay there and buy them out. And so he found another partner and bought them out and that's how it became his and he had a mission that this company was going to grow he just had a vision ron would have inherited probably close to 20 trucks in 1998 I mean, 40 trailers and now currently running 50 power units 90 trailers dad had to make a lot of sacrifices i think we made it work he was there always for the very important things In 1988, Ron was playing hockey um, back then, no mask, and I get a phone call. They're rushing him to emerge. He's taken a blade of a stick into his eye. So I get down to the hospital, and all he says is, how, does, how bad does it look? And I said, you aren't going to win any beauty contests. They're prepping him to have the eye removed. He was devastated the, to the, the day of the surgery and the next day. But then he just decided, okay, this is what I've been given, and I'm going to have to make the best of it. Dad does not miss a beat. He wants something. <laughs> if Dad wants something, he'll get it. Ron and I first met back in 1993, and uh, I went in to uh, solicit business from him. It didn't take very long to gain his trust and his honesty and I can deal with that all day long. Picky's a word that I think best describes Ron. I mean it benevolently, absolutely. He's very picky about the people that he engages in his business. He's very picky about the customers that he services. He's picky about the equipment that he runs and that's what makes him good. 
that saying the customer is always right, yeah, that's, that's that's not how that he thinks. Apply to Ron. However, he he is fair to a fault. When he says my word is good, my word is good. <laughs> He's a man who talks softly, but he carries a big stick from the standpoint that his input is very valuable. When he does speak, people will listen because Ron is the strong, silent type, and he he always chooses his words very wisely. He doesn't impose his position. And so he's that quiet presence in the back of the room, the check and balance, the person that is watching and listening, keeps us aware that we need to be doing things in the right way, but always very respectfully. Ron, he loves the OTA. Now, I think it was about a month ago, he did say, I'm the oldest, one of the oldest people there. And a lot of the old boys that used to be there are no longer there, but he asked me not that long ago, should I stay on? I'm like, well, if you love doing it, why would you stop? His service to the industry, he's just 100% committed. He has so much integrity. He's so honest. It is in his blood. He loves every aspect of the industry. It is his life. It is his life. Hey Ron, this is fantastic for you. You're, you're a person that deserves everything that you're getting here. God bless you and keep it up, my man. You're the winner. Ron, I wanna commend you on this reward. It is very well deserved. You've served this industry in many different ways over a significant period of time. You've certainly been helpful to me in forming my opinions and my direction. The value of what you have input to the industry has been significant, appreciated by all, and especially by me. Thanks, Ron, and congratulations. Congratulations, Dad. No one is more deserving of this. Dedication to the industry is you in a nutshell. We love you so much, and we're so proud of you. Congratulations. You deserve this. We love you. You're the best. Dad? Congratulations for all your hard work and dedication to the industry. I love you and I'm so proud of you. Ron, we, <laughs> I know we've gone through ups and downs, but you always said, just believe in me and I'll make things happen. I'm so proud of you. <laughs>